Hello and welcome to ETCV 631 Advanced Multimedia. I'm Chris Johnson and I'm your instructor for this course. Now this is the first of two videos designed to introduce you to the course. In this first video, I'll walk you through the overall purpose of the course and each of the individual projects. Then in the second video, I'll walk you through our new course management system, D2L. So please make sure to watch both the videos. But let's start taking a look at 631. The purpose of ETCV 631 is to introduce you to some advanced concepts and techniques in using digital technology to enhance learning. The course has seven projects, plus my usual final reflection. The first two projects, class participation and I've been thinking, will be familiar to you if you've taken courses from me before. The meat of the course is in the other five projects. And these projects are designed to allow you to explore a variety of different issues in terms of using digital learning tools. So let's take a look at the various projects. The first project is class participation. It has three components. The first is you'll post an introduction and fill in some introductory information for me. Second, you'll participate in the various discussions throughout the course. And finally, you'll participate in three online meetings that will be held at the beginning, middle, and end of the course. For your introduction, please post your current job, what you would like to learn from this class, something no one knows about you, your favorite quote, and one extra thing that's not listed here. So be creative. And you also might want to post a picture so that your colleagues know what you look like. I'll then ask you to complete this What I Know form. And it just provides me with information such as your preferred first name. For me, that's Chris instead of Christopher. And some other information such as can I text you during the course. This course has two types of discussions. One in which you'll submit a project or a portion of your project. And the other are set up for you to ask questions of your colleagues. So please make sure that you take advantage of the question discussion forum, as well as responding to the discussions that are part of the projects. My expectations for how you will conduct yourself in these discussions can be found in the netiquette section of the class information. The third component of the class participation project are the online meetings. As I mentioned, they'll be held at the beginning, middle, and end of the class. They'll be on Wednesday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m., and I'll be sending out announcements to that effect. You have two options for attending the meeting. The preferred option is that you attend the meeting live. This is the best way for you to get your questions answered and also to make connections with your colleagues. However, I know that some of you will not be able to meet the date or time. You can use option two, which is to listen to the recording of the meeting and post a summary of the topic, plus any questions that you have. To participate in the meeting, you'll click on the UA Tools option in the upper menu and select Adobe Connect. You'll briefly see a loading LTI application message, and then you'll be taken to the Adobe Connect menu seen at the bottom of this page. You have four options, although only three of them are showing at this time. The first is to join the meeting by clicking on Join. The second option, Recordings, allows you to hear a recording of the meeting. And the third option, which isn't currently showing, are office hours. I have not set up my office hours meeting yet. I may not throughout the class if I don't need to use it. If, for example, we meet using the other tools that we have available like Google Hangouts or Skype. But you should be aware of the final option, which is to create your own meeting. You'll benefit in several of these projects if you reach out to your colleagues in your class or in the program as a whole and ask them for their input. You can use this add meeting to create your own meeting if you need the functionality of Adobe Connect, such as screen sharing. The next project is one of my favorites, as the discussions are always rich and get in-depth into a variety of different topics related to educational technology. If you've taken classes from me before, you're familiar with this assignment. First, you'll be asked to be a moderator for a discussion for one week. You'll create a prompt and then facilitate the discussion by responding to your colleague's post, and in general, just making sure that the conversation keeps going. If you're not the moderator for the week, you will still be required to participate in the discussion by posting at least one comment. And if you receive a response from the moderator that requires you to respond, I'll expect you to respond to that as well. 
As soon as I have the course roster, I will fill out the moderator dates. So you'll want to check the I've been thinking as soon as you can to see what week you have. Your name will appear here and the date here. And I have to say, I do assign these randomly. So if I happen to give you a week where you anticipate being swamped, please let me know as soon as possible and we can almost always make adjustments. I'll use this table to track your postings. The DIY project, or do-it-yourself project, is designed to let you explore a topic of interest from one of your other classes or something else related to educational technology. You will put together a proposal to study an issue over the semester and then come up with some product to demonstrate your learning. All of this is up to you and you'll be asked to not only design the project but also identify your learning objectives, how you're going to assess your learning, and in general how you'll know if you're successful. Now I will work with you in developing your project proposal if you need help. So please note your project proposal is due September the 7th. You'll want to start working on this project as soon as possible. After you have your proposal for your DIY project submitted, you'll begin exploring a series of four Google Apps for Education. Now there are a number of Google Apps out there, but there are some that are only available if you have the Google Apps for Education license. The University of Arizona does. Now, if you're a regular student, you automatically have access to these apps through your cat mail. If you're faculty or staff, you will need to associate your Outlook email account with your Google account. And there are directions here on how to do that. You're going to be looking at four apps, one for teaching, one for self-learning, one for assessment. And then I'm going to ask you to find a fourth app that can be anything you want. It could be teaching, learning, or assessment or it could just be something fun. Now I'm giving you a month to identify these four apps, so I will expect in-depth reviews of each. It should be evident that you've taken the app out for more than just a trial run and that you've used it in some sort of fashion. Once you've finished exploring the Google Apps for Education, you'll then explore computational thinking and coding. You'll begin by reading some resources on computational thinking and its importance in education. And then you'll spend some time working through Code.org's resources on learning coding. After you've gone through one or two of the Code.org courses, you will then create some sort of a program. It can be a game or some other instructional activity. Now I will warn you, this is a project that you do not want to delay on as it took me approximately 15 hours to get through one of the courses in Code.org. Of course, not all at the same time, but it will still probably take you a week or two to complete the course. If you already know a programming language, please contact me and we can come up with an alternative. Next, you'll look at the concept of flipping instruction. This is something that's been around in K-12 education for five or six years at least and is now becoming prevalent in higher education as well. What you'll find is the flipped classroom is basically the model for a lot of online instruction. Now one component of a flipped classroom is often creating a video. If you need assistance in this, please let me know as I didn't put any resources in this particular project. But hopefully you already know how to do that. Your final project will be taking everything that you've learned in this class and other classes to reflect on your future use of digital tools. There are two components to this project. The first is to search the internet or look through your professional journals for two articles on the future of education. Then based on what you've learned, predict how you will be using technology differently in your classroom a year from now, three years from now, and five years from now. Now remember, I'm interested in predictions. So while I expect you to base your predictions on current trends, it's appropriate especially in the five-year time frame, to speculate about what might be. Once you've finished the projects, you'll do one final reflection on the course as a whole. This is due two days after the last day of class. I'll ask you to reflect on these six questions. Now you'll note that number four has six sub-components, so you can answer this simply as one paragraph. Please note the reflection is worth 10 points and you receive those 10 points simply for submitting a reflection of some sort. I don't read them until after the course is over. Because of this, I found that people often skip this last 
reflection, and those 10 points can be important. Sometimes they're the difference between a B and an A. So you want to make sure that you do the reflection at the end of the course. So that's it for the projects in 631. You want to make sure that you start the course by selecting begin the course here, and this will take you through the course introduction and other important information. I would anticipate that you finished reading all of this information by Wednesday of the first week of class. I'd also recommend spending some time just looking through all of the projects at the very beginning of the semester so you know what's ahead of you. That's it, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with in your projects in 631.